Hi everyone, this is Huerta of Hannah Trends and today I am going to show you all the supplies that I use to paint my landscapes. So many of you have asked me in the comments on my videos to share my supplies, the paper I use, the kind of brushes I use. So this one is for you guys. So all of these paintings that you see in my videos, I paint on Fabriano studio paper which I buy in full sheets that are 22 by 30 inches and then I cut them into quarters so that each quarter is 15 by 11 inches. Uh, this paper is only 25% co cotton content so it's not the ideal paper if you use a lot of washes and you really like to abuse your paper but the way I paint landscapes this paper works perfectly fine for me. This is the paper you will see me using in 99% of my videos. Sometimes I will use um, Fabriano Artistico or Windsor & Newton 100% cotton paper, but, but that's really rare. Mostly it's this same paper. All these paintings that you see, they are done on this paper with the trusted hockey brush by Pro Art or Cheap Joe's next come the brushes when i started off painting about two years ago i bought a whole different kind of brushes all the different kinds of brushes you could think of in different sizes and shapes i thought that the more brushes i buy the better i'll get at painting which isn't which isn't true so you see all these big wash brushes and round brushes and the little tiny ones for details and the dagger i think this is a dagger mm, yeah a dagger striper and i bought all these kind of brushes a cat's tongue but um i bought the hikes the or the hockey brush the cheap ones the big ones the ones from ebay and i found that Eventually, I realized this is not what is going to make me good at painting. It just all boils down to how much practice I get. So I limited my supplies. And these are the brushes I use in my landscapes. These are the Ron Ranson Hockeys by ProArt. They come in four sizes. I have three of them. That's, they come in extra large, large, medium, and small. I mainly use the medium and the small one. The large is a bit too large for me to control because they're made of goat hair. They hold a lot of water. So it's a bit hard for me to control the water content with the large, the medium, and the small ones work fine for me. Um, when I need to do trees and branches, uh, I use the rigger brushes. Um, these are not any special high-end brands either, just any script liner or rigger brushes that you can find. Um, this one that I use is by Royal and Langnickel. It's a size 4. They're, they have a nice good snap to it, so when I'm do doing the branches of the trees, um, I can get a nice sharp thin line another rigger that i use a lot is this one is by creative mark size one it's called a liner a script liner this is also by creative mark size one and then this one is a zen art brush it's a full squirrel uh, squirrel hair it's a size two rigger this brush comes in a set of six brushes i have the whole set uh, which includes these two flat brushes that I also use if I have to do buildings, which I don't do often. Um, so there's a three quarter inch and a size eight flat brush. And the other um, brushes I don't use out of this set are the cat's tongue and um, the round. There are a couple of round number 10 and a number eight, I believe. Um, but these three of the set, they come in really handy, so it's worth the price for me. Um, this rigger brush I use a lot for my trees. So I have these four rigger brushes that I use for all my tree branches and fine thin lines on twigs and whatnots on the ground. 
other than these hakes these riggers these flats and then i have like a size zero or a size one round brush it can be any brand it doesn't really matter as long as it's got a nice small, small um uh, short hair to draw my figure and that's all i use it for or the birds in the sky or a little tiny fence posts or my little man here so that's what i use this brush for once we're done with the brushes I have a bunch of cut up cards, credit cards, ID cards to scrape out some rocks or um, on the ground, on the seashore. I also use a palette knife for scraping out um, branches or trees like this that you see me doing in the paintings. This is the palette knife I use. It comes in as you can buy them individually or they come in sets of three or four or whichever is cost effective. They come in plastic, they come in metal. It's really not about expensive supplies. It's more about your technique and how much you practice, I believe. Um so there goes the brushes. I have shown you my paper. Next come my most comes my most beautiful paints this is the tray palette that i use these are the paints that i use in my landscapes i have squeezed out a whole bunch of them together i let it dry and uh when i need to start painting i just take a uh, this is just a spray bottle with some water in it i give a quick spritz to all the colors just to waken them up a bit and leave it like that for a minute while I set up my paper on the board and I fill up clean water in my glass container. It's a heavy glass container with the big round mouth so that my hockey brushes can go right in without anything stopping or getting in the way. So the paints, the colors that I use, I'm going to move these paintings out of the way in case I spill some water on them. So the paints that I use on my palette, the brands I could care the least about. It is not a matter of brands. I can use the Winsor & Newton Cotman colors. I could use the Da Vinci colors. I could use Daniel Smith I could use, um, I've also used Sennelier. It just doesn't matter in my opinion. It's just, as long as I have the color right, what brand it is, is not a big issue for me. On this palette that I use in 90% of my paintings, or I would say 100% of my paintings, I have 10 colors, or 11 if you count this as two, because I had yellow ochre here, which I didn't like, so I squeezed some sap green or hooker's green, one of those greens, and then they combined, mixed with a little bit of brown, it just gives me a workable green. Starting off with the yellow, I have lemon yellow over here. Sometimes I will squeeze, when I'm running out of the lemon yellow, I'll squeeze some Hansa yellow in it, or this yellow deep, Aralide yellow deep by Da Vinci. I really love this yellow and again it doesn't matter if the shades are different I just squeeze all the yellow out on this corner and then it just gives me a couple of different shades of yellow to work with this color here is my alizarin crimson this is the Sennelier right now I think but I also have the Winsor & Newton Cotman alizarin crimson um, squeezed in here on the tray so it's a mix of both the brands I don't even keep the brands separate. It just is a tray of colors. I have raw sienna. This one is Payne's Gray. Here I have burnt sienna. This is ultramarine blue. Sometimes it's French ultramarine. Sometimes it's ultramarine blue uh, red shade. Sometimes ultramarine green shade. As long as it's an ultramarine blue, it's there. Here I have a brown. I usually write down that I'm using burnt umber, which is, um, this is not it. I have burnt umber or raw umber or, um, yeah, sorry. This is burnt umber. Or sometimes I will use sepia. As long as it's a dark brown, 
I have a sepia here. As long as it's a dark brown, I squeeze it in here on this spot. This corner has indigo, which is one of my favorite colors to use when I want a dark shade of dark brown or a dark tree trunks. I use indigo mixed with the brown to make it darker or indigo mixed with my um, light red. Light red is another color which if I'm running out, this is a Winsor & Newton Cotman light red. If I don't have, if I'm running out of that, I just squeeze some Venetian red by Da Vinci over here. It's the same pigment, PR101, and it almost looks the same on paper, so I can just interchange them. Um, that's my light red. These are the 10 colors I use in most of my landscapes. However, I also have another little tray in which I, on which I squeezed some greens that I like. There's a rich green gold and undersea green uh, by Daniel Smith. I use them very rarely, but when I, I'm having troubles mixing my own greens, I just reach for this tray. There is viridian on this corner. There's some purple here, which is either the dioxazine violet purple or carbazole violet. It's a really dark pigmented purple and mixed with green. It just gives a really nice dark green. I have quinacridone gold here, which is another bright reddish orange gold color that I love. This tray I would probably use in like one or two paintings, but this is my main go-to palette along with the hockey brushes and the rigor brushes and a palette knife. Once I have put, uh, spritzed some paint, uh, some water on my paint on the tray, I get ready to um, just attach my paper to my board. This is just a piece of plywood I got from the hardware store. I asked them to cut it for me a little bit bigger than 11 by 15 because this is the size that I usually paint. I need just four binder clips to just clip the paper on. I have a tabletop easel that I purchased from Blix website, I think. Um, it has like a few different angles inclines to which I can keep my paper. And this is what I use to rest my board to paint my landscapes using my hockey brushes, my very beautiful paint tray, <laughs> and my rigger brushes and the rigger brushes and the palette knife with the cut up cards and Sometimes, oh yes, yeah, sometimes I will use this Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. This little bottle of magic is um, very useful in creating like a little bit of highlight here and there. Not a lot. This is just for highlights to use with my round number one brush. This is the only uh, brush I would use with this so that I just put it sparsely on my painting and not overdo it. So there goes my all my supplies, my paints, my paper, my brushes. I hope you enjoy this video and you found something useful in it. And I hope to see you next time in my next landscape. Thanks for watching.